Hey gang, welcome to my channel. I'm the Pony 314, and as they say, nothing succeeds like success. And it doesn't get much more successful than this American classic, the military sidearm by which all others are judged, the M1911. So, here are the basics. This is a short recoil, single action, automatic pistol, has a manual safety, grip safety, under the beaver tail. Most models had a five inch barrel. Fires a 45 ACP round from seven round magazine. Eight round, eight round magazines came around a lot later. But the M1911 came about in the early days of the 20th century as the US military began searching for a new automatic pistol to replace all the existing revolvers that were then in service. What they wanted was reliability, a round that could knock a man flat with a single shot, and, well, that's, those are really the two uh, qualities that they prioritized. And so a lot of tests were going on the first decade or so of the 20th century, and in the middle of this environment, enter the man himself. That's right, John Moses Browning, the Jimi Hendrix of firearm design. Now he already had a first-rate line of automatic pistols going back to about 1900, and he used his existing principles of automatic pistol design to come up with a new mousetrap for Colt. Colt, who was always eager to both acquire and hang on to their military contracts. Well, over the years, a lot of other designs by Savage, DWM, Webley, and others were eliminated from these trials or simply didn't keep up with the design changes that the U.S. Army demanded. And eventually, the Browning design, this one, uh, won out and due to, among other reasons, its incredible reliability. The final tests involved firing 6,000 rounds over two days, and Browning's design didn't have a single malfunction. An adoption of this design was kind of a no-brainer after that. And anyway, this design became the model 1911, and it was officially adopted on March 29th, 1911, and the U.S. military never looked back. The M1911 was in action all over the place over the next few years. I mean, this thing saw action against Pancho V in Mexico, it was in Haiti, you know, brush fire wars like that. But its first really serious test was World War I where the Western Front involved some of the most miserable battlefield conditions in the history of war. Mud, dirt, rain, ice, you name it. Conditions that really separated the first-rate weapons from the not-so-first-rate ones. Pretty quickly, the M1911 earned a reputation as the best military sidearm of the war, possibly in the world. Its 45 ACP round could stop just about anyone and it was not in the habit of failing on you. And those are both very important for a doughboy's life expectancy. Colt supplied these to the military in huge numbers, and Remington, Springfield, and some other companies were contracted to supply the military as well. Some of these were even made by North American arms in Quebec. Some were chambered in the 455 Weblo Auto Round for British service, so let's just say the M1911 got around. And by the way, as a side note, this particular one is an original Colt made in 1917. I tracked the serial number and it absolutely, positively saw action in World War I and may well have seen action in World War II as well. But I figured as long as we're talking about World War I, that was probably worth mentioning. Anyway, it performed so well in uh, World War I that after the war, only the absolute most minor design changes were proposed and they were all well, they were all exterior design changes. Internally, the weapon was obviously fine as it was. So, what they wound up doing was there was a longer beaver tail to avoid slide bite, cutouts on the frame for your trigger finger, a curved mainspring housing, wider front sight, new standard grips with simple checkering, not a whole lot really. Tet tells you how good the M1911 was right out of the gate. The new version, which by the way, was this. The M1911A1 was introduced in 1924. Between the World Wars, the M1911 was produced in a 
in a number of countries under license, Norway, Argentina, Mexico, Spain, Brazil, a lot of others, for use by their own military. So you might say the M1911 kind of caught on. Then, say, World War II comes along. The M1911 once again proved its reliability, its accuracy, and stopping power time and time again. About 1.9 million were produced by a number of manufacturers for service in the war, uh, for use by both the U.S. and Allied militaries. It's, it stood up like a champ to the miserable humidity of the Pacific, the dust and sand of Africa and Italy, and the mud and freezing cold of Western Europe. Everywhere the American servicemen took this, it won for itself a hell of a reputation as a first-rate military sidearm, possibly the best ever made. A lot of people say that now, and I don't blame them. So, moving ahead, the M1911 went on to show its merits in Korea and Vietnam, stood guard over America and the West during the Cold War, continued giving outstanding service all the while doesn't really seem as though any serious thought was given to replacing this increasingly aging war horse. And really, why should they? As decades went by, no new military sidearm ever seemed to come along to topple the M1911 from the top spot. And even when that time finally did come, in the mid to late 80s, resulting in the adoption of the Beretta M9, not everybody thought it was a change for the better. After all, it was Congress that pressured the military into adopting a new sidearm chambered in 9mm Luger in the interest of NATO standardization. But that's not to say that the M1911 vanished overnight. You see, this beauty, this classic, just continued to see military service right through Desert Storm and the wars in, in Afghanistan and Iraq, but increasingly in the hands of specialized servicemen like Green Berets, Marine Force Recon. I hear that Navy SEALs still make use of it today. So, best of my knowledge, it's still not completely gone. So imagine that situation. Elite outfits choosing a supposedly dated design like the M1911 over some spiffy new 9mm. So it's obvious the M1911 isn't going quietly, that's for sure. And on the subject of going, it's time to hit the range, so we're going south, the truth or consequences, to perforate some targets. So, let's hit the road. Welcome to the Municipal Shooting Range in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, where we have the legend, the icon, the M1911. And there's our bleeding zombie clown. We're going to put some big old 45 caliber holes right through them. So, let's hit it. So, I already said my early 1911 was a pre-A1 Colt made in 1917 that saw action in World War I. Well, my 1911A1, not so much. This is actually a very modern one, made by American Tactical in the Philippines. But, uh, boy, you really can get these from anywhere, can't you? But, just goes to show that 1911, by any other name, it's an outstanding pistol. So we're going to go ahead and take this one off camera and go back to the much cooler one, huh? Give me a second. Ah, that's more like it. But anyway, when it comes to civilian ownership, the M1911 is probably as popular as it was 100 years ago. We have this image in our head of the 1911 and the hands of gangsters and G-men, and that's true to a point. But that hard-won reputation in long-term, I mean really long-term military use, made it something that civilian America wanted. Well, I certainly did. And they still do, evidenced by the vast number of companies out there still making it to feed that hunger. I mean, Smith & Wesson, Taurus, Kimber, Norinco, Rock Island, American Tactical, hell, even some mo modern law enforcement tactical outfits still use a 1911. I know the FBI hostage rescue team does. LAPD SWAT still uses this beauty. 
So in a world of Glocks, Sig Sauer's, FNs, and so on, in an age where the 9mm is the default factory setting, so to speak, the M1911 is still out there in one form or another, keeping the scene alive. That's not bad for an old relic, is it? Yep, as I said before, nothing succeeds like success. Now, with more than 7 million made by all manufacturers, it really doesn't get much more successful than the good old-fashioned M1911. So, let's see if I can be successful at hitting my target with it. So, let's get some more range time. But first, if you'd like to help keep this channel going, feel free to support us on Patreon. There's a link in the description. All right, everybody, back to the range. We're now going to do our second shoot, and this time it's the M1911A1. A lot of damage to our bleeding zombie clown. Oh well, let's do some more. Oh yeah. So that was our episode on the M1911. Thanks for watching, and hope to hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like what we do on this channel, somewhere down there's a subscribe button. Wouldn't mind if you hit it. Well, I'm the Pony 314. I'll see you at the range.